Hi Cancer, it's Elle here to do your general weekly reading. This will be from December 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for being here. It is general, so it will not resonate with every Cancer. If it does resonate with you, like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. It is much appreciated. All links are below if you want to request a personal reading or dating advice or whatever. Let's get into it. So, how Cancer comes into the week. Seven of Fire, all right. The advice for Cancer. The Empress, nice. And the outcome here is the Nine of Water. Protect what it is you really want. What it is you really want to start. Does That just came up to me. Uh, yeah, defend it, protect it, stand on your beliefs. And it looks like that's how you're coming into the week. This may be in regards to some relationship, marriage. We do have the Hierophant at the bottom of the deck. Whatever position you've chosen to take here, um, protect it. Choose wisely, though. Choose your battles wisely. Your advice is to, you have the Empress. Um, there could be somebody pregnant. You have dreams. You have a dream. You have something that you're wishing and hoping for with the Nine of Water, Nine of Cups here. It says expound on that energy. That this is a really fruitful, plentiful, bountiful start to a business, a relationship of some sort. It says that you need to nurture yourself or you are nurturing yourself and others. You, we have a three card. How you are communicating is doing for self, putting yourself first, putting yourself on that pedestal um, that maybe you, you haven't done in the past. You have put everything and everyone else first. Uh, it says that you need to, in order to have what it, it says if you take the advice of the cards and put yourself first, start that new relationship, start that new business, it is going to be fruitful and plentiful for you. It's going to turn out well. You're going to have a desired outcome. Oh, this is a blessing. You can take part in nourishing yourself. Some of you need to separate yourself from either friends or family. Do not be concerned with or you're overly concerned with what friends, family, neighbors everyone else thinks how you're communicating is that what the cards tell you, you need to put yourself first you have been taken on outside um, communication and internalizing it it says draw from yourself because in that you can have what you want you can have a more love for your life your wish can come true your concerns will fade here with the nine of cups it says that you're ready for the next step it says that you've done the work you're knowledgeable you're emotionally content in in regards to this wish this wish fulfillment um this could be someone standing their ground about maybe staying single not getting married or not wanting to be married or in a significant traditional union uh let's see what this is about yeah closed i know cl some of you it it's shut down uh you've learned lesson you now you're putting a lot of energy effort into self self-love self-care family maybe you were listening to family um maybe you're closed off to family to their opinion to their input help yeah you closed family help you're close to even helping the family right now or or getting help from the family or um you're close to some avenue here you wanted to be around like-minded individuals who are not going to judge you who accept you for you you this you might be dealing with your mother you may be close to her help or she's close to helping you vice versa 
but it says that if you just put yourself first and you continue to nourish yourself and do the work in regards to nourishment uh, nurturing yourself um, taking part in some lavish abundance for self though keeps going back to self because it looks like someone put someone else on a pedestal here and it's time for you to replace that that someone with you put yourself on that pedestal this could be in regards to a marriage you may have put someone else on a pedestal that they didn't deserve to be on um, you let them wear the crown and they didn't deserve the crown this could be a self-centered individual it says take your power back and move it move it in a new direction and put all that power energy effort into you stand your ground in regards to some relationship marriage or some business here how you need to effectively communicate or share this energy is by doing and defending your own beliefs some of you don't believe in the traditional family here and you're close to it uh, someone's wanting to give you just that someone's wanting to give you some manner of traditionalism or you gave someone else traditional family dynamic they they mucked it up um, and or you just don't want that that's not what you're after but it doesn't mean that you're not willing to help or you're not willing to compromise um, there could be an, an air of drama or there was here with family because someone was trying to conform to what maybe the family wants or wanted or trying to have this false sense of family with an individual who is selfish and self-centered there's so much going on cancer this week the advice is to put yourself first in all things if you want to get a massage and you have a wife or a husband at home and you would typically say come on let's go get a massage together or you would get the massage and gift it to them no the cards say you go get the massage you go home and you tell them about the massage if you feel like they're deserving of it then maybe you'll you'll have that conversation when you have it if you want to take the trip and it's maybe a boys trip or a girls trip says go um stand your ground you it's almost as if you let something or someone walk over you and that's what they're used to doing or cancer you're doing this to someone else or someone else is saying I'm going to put myself first um, someone is closing off to you because you're not doing what they want you to do or some, or some of you just closed you were helping a whole family or your family or another person's family you're close to the to that to you know helping anymore Cancer, if you feel like this resonated with you, go over to the website and book your own reading there. Take advantage of the coupon codes below. Stay tuned for L's Real Corner, okay? We can get some real world advice uh, coupled with the tarot, okay? Thank you. Take care. Happy holidays, guys. Hello, everyone. So today on L's Real Corner, all right. So today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men. You can pertain this to women too, but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos, uh, subscribing to the channel than men. So I apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex, just apply it to your life, right? Okay. All right. So emotionally unavailable men women cat dog whatever are basically non-committal 
okay? Those, these are non-committal people. These are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you, uh, with anything or with anybody. It, it might spill over into every facet of their life. We're talking about more so relationships, romantic relationships. Um, so that's that's what we have here. Not they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people. They could be married, uh, in love with another, or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit. Um, and which hence they are emotional emotionally unavailable. So when we look at when we dissect this this term here, we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable. The mind wants to rationalize that, that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that, no, 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because, you know, they tell me how much they like me, they compliment me, they touch me, we have sex, blah, blah, blah. So you rationalize and you say, they're not emotionally unavailable. They are whatever you want to deem them as. But emotionally unavailable, what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is it's a relationship it's i put in and then i'm going to receive out it is um it is equal in a sense suppose supposedly you know um it is a relationship it, it could be if an if then relationship if i do this then i'll get this this type of person the emotionally unavailable person it's not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me. Well, let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are. They're complimentary. They're seductive. You know, so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look well that is a key factor of an emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason we've got some reasons here it could be more uh, to invest emotionally, okay? So you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes, so let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive, seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine so if they tell you that we're meeting on monday at 6 p.m at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my term, my terms, my routine. And their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to 
you know, they, they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No. They're not into that. There's no um, investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay? So this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life, no real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah. Uh, contentment. Yeah. And this day and age we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing it is a bad word you should never be content you should always be striving for more and more and more better 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 but contentment is not bad if it's within your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are what you want and then you can start to ask the answer some of these questions like what is my end game right okay so anyway moving right along you say um i say what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something um you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving or maybe they don't even know how to give right so you're trying to get water from the rock okay Granted, it can happen. It can happen. But I do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation, an emotionally unavailable person. This is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just it's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment. And you tell the person and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time. And you've come along and asked me for a commitment and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person learn your person ask questions ask b here's the tarot for you the page of swords be inquisitive be curious be asking the questions spy within reason if they have social media look at the social media if there's a mutual friend ask Sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person learn your person this is if you want commitment learn this person so you know what you're dealing with you know who you're dealing with the most i say this every single time or i ask the question every time i i do a reading a personal reading the the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this? And how do they feel about this? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth. Expecting, uh... The asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? 
but you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me, but let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years. Well, we know that that is not the truth. You, We both go on about our lives. You find out that I've only been doing YouTube videos for two years, uh, well, three years. And then you say, you come back to me, you say, well, I, I asked you the question. How long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term of, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you, if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I have, you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out because now when you find out, you, you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never ask. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along, you want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So... You, you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman, will probably, most likely, elude or, or move toward, toward evasiveness. You start asking questions. It's no more surface level. You're trying to go deep, you know, um... You may say, well, I only see you on Wednesday and Friday. What are you doing, you know, the other days of the week? Or I know you see you work, blah, blah, blah. But um, maybe we can get together on one of those other days. If they start to be evasive, then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games, they give you just a little bit, or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to, to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavail you know emotionally unavailable person all right because they become the seven of swords now at this point you can deal with this shit i wouldn't um if you want to continue to deal with this state your claim be the ace of swords stating your claim is I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you, to know you outside of the bedroom, outside of doing something like going to dinner or um, drinks. I just, I want to really spend more time with you, around you, because I would like to get to know you, all right? They're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid, the rigidness of their routine, right? So, um, in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be, this is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, 
then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you, uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim, and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause. Okay. Um, but, but do understand that good news and, and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way, because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting, and you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You've stated your claim. You've created the boundaries, and now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, Maybe this person never comes back around or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They they still come back around being evasive, seductive, you know, the same old thing that you might need to. Uh, this is why the I put the world here. You Now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? You, some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is hence that's the operative word. It can be done. You're going to have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson, walk away. A person can institute these types this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own and there's no trauma um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this and you're, and you can walk away, be able to walk away. Um, emotionally, um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson, are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you if the result is this person is coming back and being the same. And some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and um, giving you exactly what you want. Still, the world. Now you're going to the next chapter. Because you now know how to deal with, with situations you can readily identify. Also, with me writing the tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business or family or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card, 
And you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy? And you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more cu curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know them. You do need to do the investigative work. The Page of Swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the King of Swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So we have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing it talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for for anybody um share this video okay thank you guys take care guys